Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be checking out the pretty famous Lawa 24 millimeter probe lens. So I've been wanting this lens for a while, but I kind of held off on it as it is a little pricey. But as I saw more and more footage from this lens, I was pretty convinced that I definitely want to have it. Thankfully, it was on sale. So I went ahead and purchased it. So this is a pretty unusual lens as it is a macro lens at 24 millimeter. So yeah, it gives you that really interesting close up view. Now, the earlier versions actually had a micro USB connection to power the light source, but as we can see here I got a sticker that says type C. Now you guys probably notice there's a lot of Chinese letters as this is a China made lens and I think Lawa itself is a Chinese brand. So yeah this is the box it comes in it's not very large. On the back of the box, we have a little more information. So it's a 2X macro probe, 24 millimeter, f-stop of 14 to 40, and some more parameters that are completely in Chinese, but it is 474 grams, which is not too heavy. And these are made for full frame cameras. The one I have here is FE model, which is for Sony. So in the box, we get a couple cases. One's like a little bag here that you put the probe lens in, and we'll look at this a little closer in a second. And the other one here is a full blown out, I guess, hard case that looks pretty interesting. We got the Lawa logo here, and it's kind of like in this chrome finish. It's definitely nothing fancy. It feels cheap. It is kind of nice. If you want to store your lens in a very protective place, especially when you travel. And this case does have locks, so let's go ahead and open it up. And that's what we see inside. So we get a little manual here and it is in two languages shows us all the functions and probably the more interesting thing is all the parameters and if you guys can see there it is a manual focusing lens of up to f40 so yeah that probably gives you a clue that you need a lot of light for this thing some more random paperwork probably quality control whatnot else and you did get a couple cables a black one and a white cable here that has a little controller on it so what's interesting is that they do have two cables so the black one is just like a hard wire and it's for the led light but the white one has the controller on it i wish they would have just made one black one and put the controller on that that would have been a lot better in my opinion but in any case it does come with two cables and now the lens so it is in this little baggie and you guys can see we have an e-mount cap at the end and this is what it looks like it's quite long and a lot thinner at the barrel here or the lens itself than i thought it would be and you guys can see my finger the barrel itself it's much smaller for some reason i always thought that this was larger than it actually is so so we do have waterproofness from the usb connection here down so you can submerge this into water about this far at the lens area we do have a cap it is metal and at the end there you can see we have led lights and our optics and this is just kind of like a pressure fit or snug fit. So the USB port is for lighting the light on the front and the cables provided will power it. So you do need like a power bank or some kind of power source. Here we have a couple adjustments. The f-stop from f14 to all the way of f40. So this part is really nice and smooth and feels great. And here we have the focus and you guys can see it's all labeled. Now the focus also is nicely damped but it doesn't feel as smooth and refined as the aperture ring. The focus is more crusty feeling, I guess, is the best way I can explain it. Kind of has like a friction, a little bit like a sandpaper feel. It's not terrible, and maybe it's just my lens. It's still very smooth and very accurate, so, and damped very well. You guys can see I can move this thing very slowly and pretty consistently, so, yeah. And as we go down to the mount, it gets a lot thicker here. And if we open the cap, and this is what it looks like. So we've got a metal mount here. And hopefully you guys can see that lens in there. And it does go in pretty deep, about a whole inch or I don't know how many millimeters. Well, I do have a little measuring ruler here, so I'll carefully measure it. So we got one inch deep, which makes it about two and a half centimeters, which is about 25 millimeters. And here we have the little Lawa logo with a parts number looks like. So yeah, the lens is very sturdy feeling and definitely not cheap feeling and actually gives you confidence. Now most of the weight is actually, if I put my finger here, it's actually more up front. And this is where we have a bunch of optics or lenses that bend the light to the sensor. So yeah, it's actually more front heavy than it is back heavy. So, But overall, it's on the lighter side as a lens itself. Now because it's long, it's going to have good leverage. So even if you mount this on a camera because this is so far away, just be aware of, you know, it is going to weigh the camera down or try to pull it down. So Now we also do get this little nice carrying case. And it is padded very nicely, so it's a nice quality bag. We got the logo here. I like the red. Looks pretty cool. The best part about it is the lens actually fits inside, if I can show you guys. But there's like these Velcro straps inside. It'll just fit in there. 
So it is kind of a tight fit, but you do have Velcro that holds the lens in there. So even when you open it, it doesn't fall out. Yeah, very snug in there. And yeah, this could be a great way to, you know, transport it. Maybe if you're going out in your backpack or something. But yeah, we have little handles, shoulder strap, and it's actually got a hard bottom. So it doesn't just bend. So yeah, guys, this is everything that it comes with. So let's move all this out of the way and we'll connect the lens to the camera. All right, so we got the camera and the first thing that stands out is how tall this lens is. So let's go ahead and connect it. So there's no markings on the lens to match the white dot there. The logo kind of goes on the side and then ends up at the top when you snap it in. And this is what we look like. So yeah, as you guys can see, you know, pretty normal full frame camera here and the lens is quite long. Now, if you're thinking that you can film with this lens handheld, you're probably fooling yourself a bit because number one, it's very hard to hold still. And number two, because it's macro, you know, every little tiny move will just move you a ton in the frame. So, so you really need some kind of slider for this or at least a turntable where you can put this on a tripod and turn something around it. So, so let's go ahead and open this cable here. So this is just a normal USB type C connection and then a USB to a power source. Now I wish this wire was not white because if you're filming something that's reflective, this could be an issue. But technically if you are using this, most likely that won't be an issue as you will be having a light up front. So the USB plugs in into this little connection spot and I got a power bank here for the source. We get a little blue light that glows on the remote and that's the power button. Let's go ahead and take the cap off. Let's hit the power button. And look at that, we got light. So what's great about this is you can dim it. So we can go down. So this is the lowest and it's actually quite dim. And then what you guys saw there was the brightest. I believe so, yeah. It's quite bright actually. The light is a little bit more on the yellow side. So keep that in mind as you might have to adjust your color temperature on the camera. So if you do want light, you will have to have either a power bank and this wire is not too long. It's about three feet or so. So if your camera does have an output source, this would be pretty nice. But if it doesn't, then you will need something to power it with. So let's go ahead and remove this for now. As I'm not really planning on using this much because of the color light and the look that it gives, I'm more inclined to use outsource lighting to get the look that I'm looking for. And because we are using the Sony a7S III here, we should get pretty good results as we are really good with low light. And so the way I plan to use this is with the Slypod. I do have this first edition Moza Slypod that I got quite a few years ago and I've been using it a lot. Just random b-roll kind of pull-ins and outs and things like that. So I think it'll go great with this lens as we do have a decent amount of travel especially for macro filming and the slide pod is pretty smooth overall it does have a little bit of steps here and there and it's not perfect but i feel like overall this should be a pretty good experience and on my camera i already have the mount to connect so let's go ahead and attach it and we're good to go. So now I have to just connect the slide pod to a tripod and we're ready to film. All right guys, so I set up the camera on the slide pod. As you can see, the picture is pretty dark. So for this camera, I have it set on 24P, 50 shutter speed and ISO 2000. And on our lens, we're at F14. So this is wide open and you can already see that it's too dark. So if I go to like F40, it completely just turns dark. So you guys can see how much light this lens needs. It's Quite astonishing. So let's go ahead and use the front LED light and see if we can bump it up here. So right away you can see what kind of look you get with this light. So this is brightness all the way. So we're on F14. I'm going to move it to about F22 right here and that's starting to look about where I would like it. But you know the look is definitely going to matter. So let's go ahead and slide forward and see what we get. Now I have a feeling as the closer we get to the plant the brighter it'll get and you know not the best kind of look. Let's just go forward and see what happens. I think I will have to adjust my focus a little bit. Let me go ahead and do that because I think we're going to be out of focus once we get to it. But let's just go with this and see what happens. So here we go. So we're slowly going into the plant there. And now we're starting to see some focus. Not too sure if I got the focus right on, but as you can see guys, it's getting too bright, like way too bright. So I'm gonna turn the LED down a bit. And yeah, just, you know, <laughs> I mean, depending on what you're shooting and how you're shooting it, it could work, it could not, you know? Let's go ahead and go backwards. And I'm going to turn the light down all the way and see if we get a better result here. Uh, 
Uh, maybe you need to adjust the focus just a little bit closer here. There we go, I think that's more accurate. So yeah, all the way down actually it looks better because we're getting more consistent lighting over the grass there. But still, then it's too dark in the background so you need to add light. So as you can see, using the light that's on it could be useful if you're going like into a hole somewhere. But overall, you know, I don't think I would use it at all. And you know, if you try to adjust it, then it's either too bright or whatever, you know, it's in steps, so. So let's get rid of the light and we'll bring some control lighting for the top. All right guys, so now we have our key light shining right down at the plant. I'm not sure if that's the best way to light it, but I'm sure it's gonna be a lot better than using the ring light on the lens. And I had to turn the exposure down, that's why everything's a little darker, but. But yeah, we're keeping everything the same, the focus and the aperture here of the last run. And let's go ahead and run it again and see what it looks like now. So you guys can see that or at least in my opinion, it looks much, much better. So lighting is everything when you're doing these kind of shots, so. Looks like our grass is kind of uh, not bending the right way. Okay, let's try to go back the other way now. So I'm really liking this look a lot more as our lighting is just more even and captures, you know, the subject a lot better. So for the next part, let's go ahead and put it on F40. Now, the reason I'm inclined to film everything in F40 is because our depth of field is much more deeper, or I guess it, there's not so much depth of field. There's more in focus. So we're gonna go ahead and go straight to F40 and you guys can see everything got a lot darker. So let's add even more light here on top. Not sure exactly how much we need, but let's just add a nice amount. So now we're super bright. Hopefully this main camera is still picking everything up, but yeah, we're very bright on top of the plant. And if we look at our probe camera, we can see that it actually looks pretty good. Now we can adjust the ISO up a little bit and things like that and still get a really good picture, but we're at 2000, which gives us excellent picture quality. And by the way, guys, I forgot to mention that I did turn the color temperature of the camera at 38 because this probe lens is naturally warmer than normal. So let's go ahead and go for it. And this is F40, so at F40, you guys will see that the grass will be a lot more in focus. More of it, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But I haven't adjusted the focus at all, I'm not sure if I need to. Yeah, I probably need to go a little far though. Let me go ahead and do that. There we go. So yeah, you guys can see it's just much more to see. And it looks less of a macro lens and more of like you know, bug eye perspective, so. But yeah, going backwards is probably a little better. And it does darken up the background even more because, you know, we do need more light now. So let's go backwards and that'll probably look a little better as the grass folds better back. So yeah, I mean, you know, depending on what look you're going for, you can adjust the lighting, the f-stop, and obviously the focus, so. And this lens does have infinity focus, and if we do that, we can pretty much go pretty far. Let me go ahead and do that for you guys. And now we're a good distance away from it, and you know, we're in focus. So you can use this lens actually for practically anything. And we're being at F40 right now. It really gives us, you know, the subject in focus of much, much longer was as we get closer and farther away. So, but yeah, we're probably a little dark on this, but yeah. But yeah, guys, I mean, you know, this is a pretty unique kind of lens that you can film 
and quite interesting scenarios. So yeah, overall, I really love this lens and I feel like if you understand what it's for and what kind of shots you can get with it and how you can use it, then you would definitely appreciate it. Now, if you just wanna buy it because it's cool, you're probably not gonna end up using it. So if you're kind of doubting, then rent it and try it out. But if you do like product reviews or you just wanna make unique shots, this lens is very interesting and a perspective that no other lens can really bring. And it being so thin could fit pretty much anywhere. So I'm personally gonna really enjoy it and use it a lot more. It does take a little bit to set up, lighting and whatnot else, but even one or two shots at this level could really bring a subject in a new perspective. And also they have different variants with different mounts and also a cine version which has the little teeth for the gears for focusing. So if you do wanna get one for yourself, check out the links below. And I'm gonna leave you guys with a bunch of footage, just different random things and hopefully that'll be helpful and maybe give you some ideas of how you can use a lens like this. So thanks for stopping by and enjoy the rest of the video. Mm -hmm.